Hello and welcome back and today we're going to look at another Synology mobile application for iPhone and Android. I'm sorry if it's a bit echoey right now but I'm in quite a large room which you'll find out in just a small moment. And today I want to look at surveillance. I want to look at the Synology application DS Cam. Now for those that had heard, uh, apparently there's going to be support soon within the surveillance application from Synology to use the mobile phone camera and incorporate that into your surveillance station um, operations. But what we're going to show you today is what can the DS Cam application do and is it any good? So if we go into the application, here's the user interface here. And straight away we can go into the settings, you know, basically basic stuff about remembering your password and more. And of course we can scan the local network to find the device here and there's more information about the app on the bottom right. If we sign into this application, we get an idea of the user interface now. Disclosure, I've only got the one camera connected to this and you can see my battery on my phone is low and uh, there's only one NAS, uh, IP camera connected to this NAS for those that are wondering it's a Rio link camera uh, the RLC 423 I believe and this camera here uh, if we look at the user interface here we can see live information with regard to the camera that's connected uh, on the top right here we can edit the user interface a little bit more and refresh if we click this tab here the number of things on screen change so if we had multiple cameras, we get a bigger view of each camera and we can divide that into bigger um, desktop usage as well. And that's the multi-view uh, camera um, overview there, the user interface. At the top left, we can go into the options menu here. that lets us look at the version uh, of the application, change the account login, because if you've got multiple logins onto a NAS, they can all see different things if they've got a different camera each and different uh, privileges per camera. The push service is if you want notifications for say motion tracking. If that happens on the camera, you can get a notification sent directly to your phone via the app. Geofencing we'll talk about later on uh, in the video, but that's to do with um, a home security. And there's other ones about continuous playback, continuous recording, and switching to MJPEGs, which you know is one of these things you have to do for certain browsers and certain phones that have difficulty with certain codecs with regards to playback and more information there at the bottom about the version of the app. Now, um, cameras, let's go straight into it. If we look at the camera here, this is a camera that's been set up next to the NAS in question. You might see my hand here on the side of the screen. I'm just gonna wave there for you. And why don't we let the camera pan round to have a good look at me. So let's have a look. Me on my phone. And there I am, hello, how's it going? All right, there's the phone that I'm using there. And what we can do is we can do all kinds of things. We can zoom straight in if we want. And we just we can either tap on those buttons there, um, or we can press and hold like that. And the camera will zoom in. Not too much, let's zoom in a little bit more than that. We might get a little bit too close to my face here. And there we are. And this gives me the ability to zoom in and have remote control of this camera. Even though I'm on Wi-Fi right now, I'm able to control this remotely. You might see a slight lag. So for example, while I'm talking, I'm gonna wave and you'll see slight delay there between what's on screen if we zoom out using the app. So what we'll do is we'll zoom back out there. And there's a number of things we can do with this. Now straight away, if we want, we can take a quick snapshot of what's on screen and we'll go back to those snapshots later on. But on top of that, if we go to the options menu, we can look at preset positions and patrols. So I've already set up some preset positions around the room. So say if we go for preset position number four, and that will move the camera to somewhere else in the room where I preset it. Let's go to preset position five, which is higher. I should move the camera up. And if we bring it back around to preset position number three, the camera will point relatively close to me, but I think it was a little bit low perhaps even preset two. Now these are things that I've set up using the desktop interface of DSM 6.2 and the new surveillance station application. These are things you cannot do within the app. So do bear in mind the number of the key features of the surveillance station application have to be set up on the desktop app via that user interface in the browser. The app, uh, the mobile phone app on iOS and Android will only let you utilize some of the things that you've already set up. Another core one, is the patrol. Now I've never bench tested this, but this test patrol uh, ends up patrolling around the whole room. The issue is going to be that more than likely we're gonna get all manner of alerts while this camera starts checking its um, general vicinity. Now right now on the desktop application, there'll be all kinds of alerts happening right now. 
due to the motion of the camera and what it's looking for in the path of its tracking. So right now from what I can see in the room, it's tracking me all the way around this room, but because we haven't set up any alert paths on the mobile, therefore there's no notifications. But in a real world setting, if you'd set up notifications on the mobile app, uh, on the desktop application, you would get an alert to your phone to let you know there's motion on screen. So that camera is going to continue to pan around the room because it's on that patrol. Uh, actually, we should, just to stop it mucking around, why don't we put it back to one of our preset positions? We'll move it back to preset position one, which is the center of the room. And we can look at all the other options. In recordings, this camera, as you can see, has been running for quite a while. So we can look at one of our previous recordings. So we go back to the one at 20 minutes past four. And this is a preset recording uh, of the camera earlier today. Um, and again, because there's not been a great deal of motion, there's not too much to show you. Maybe we can go back to a more recent recording. And these recordings here are happening, have happened in real time um, while we've been uh, talking or earlier today when I've been in another room. So the camera itself has been sort of moving around very casually and there's a live recording happening now for the last three minutes. So everything we've been doing for three minutes, in theory, should have been recorded. So right now, that's not me talking on screen live. I'll prove it. I'll keep my mouth closed. And as you can see, that's our recording from earlier on. But at the same time, the camera has still been recording in real time during this whole time, if we go back. So that's a lovely feature, the fact that you can review your records even though the camera has still been moving all this time. Uh, on top of that, snapshots are those pictures we've been taking. So there's the one we took earlier. And that's live from the camera once again without interrupting the recording of the camera. So hopefully that will load up the picture that we took earlier on. Again, we are putting a lot of work on the PSU here, uh, on the CPU, I should say, while trying to access all this information while it's doing a live recording and a patrol. Notifications are where we've been given a quick buzz to say um, that there's been motion, but obviously because we haven't set up um, triggered alert status for this camera, we're not going to see any at this time. And home mode is the last thing I want to talk about because it's very interesting indeed. Now, binding and um, geofencing is such. If you enable home mode, you can set it up that your phone on the same Wi-Fi network will basically ping, uh, the, the Wi-Fi will be pinged by your phone when it's out of range. So while you're in the home, your phone will be in constant connection over Wi-Fi with the surveillance network. However, if you walk away from your phone, uh, walk away from your home, as soon as the connection between your mobile phone on Wi-Fi and the NAS are broken, home mode um, will, uh, uh, thanks to home mode, your cameras will then activate for monitored recording. So in real terms, what that means is when you're in the home, the cameras won't record in this home mode, so you won't be monitored. But if you walk out of the home with your phone, if you bind it to your mobile there, so if we bind it to the mobile device I'm using, if we enable home mode and we bind it to my phone, the re result will be that the camera... But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. This has pretty much been the whole of DS Cam. If it does feel a little limited, don't get me wrong. And once you look at the, the QNAP application and their QVR application, there are loads of options. But if you want a nice, straightforward, and simple um, surveillance experience for your NAS, definitely surveillance station in their mobile application is appealing indeed. And do check out a number of the Synology apps that have a lot of work geared towards this simplistic interface. Nevertheless, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video.